I highly recommend using countdown timers when you go live using StreamYard. However, they are really, really annoying for people who are watching replays. If you wanna know how to edit that timer out in YouTube directly, so you still get your views and your comments on your replay, this video is for you. Without further ado, let's hop in. So first of all, I did a practice stream um, in a previous video about just kind of an overview of how StreamYard works. If you haven't seen that video, I'll go ahead and link to it over here. Um, but now that I'm done with that video, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the broadcast. So this will also delete it on YouTube if you check that box and it will remove it in your dashboard. So I try to keep things nice and tidy. When your scheduled live streams end, they automatically go in the past. So I'm going to click on pass. So you can see there are a few different versions of past events. So if you see the StreamYard duck, this little duck represents StreamYard on air, which is the webinar feature. So when I went live at the beginning of the year to talk about what my plans were for Q1, I multi-streamed on on air and on YouTube. The reason why is I wanted to have the option to share the replay without making that person register. And so I did both. Now, if I wanted people to register to watch the replay, if I go to share, I would toggle on available on demand. What that means is viewers can watch the recording after it has ended. If registration is enabled, registrants will also receive an email to watch. So if you want email notifications being sent out to people to come to your webinars automatically, you wanna make sure that that is toggled on. This is what StreamYard on air looks like. So just, you know, email address, first name, last name, register. If you've already registered, you can join in here to watch the replay or obviously to watch it live. So every time that you go live on StreamYard, not only is it streaming to a platform, whether it is YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, what have you, it is also saving it in your StreamYard account. So you can see over here, my storage is 39.5 of 50 hours. So if you find yourself maxing that out, it's probably because you haven't gone in and deleted past recordings, which you can always do by clicking on the three dots and clicking on delete broadcast. All right, cool. So you can technically, if we go in here, you can technically download directly from StreamYard a past live stream. So if I click on download, I have some options. I can do audio and video. I can do audio only if I wanted to turn it into a podcast. I could do the transcript, which is in beta, or I could download the chat. So if I had people like asking me questions and I wanted to have access to that after the workshop was over, I could download the chat here. Now, you could technically download a past live stream and then edit it, right? You could go in, you could trim off the timers, you could take out any like awkward technical glitches so that people watching the replay don't have to worry about going through all of that. However, if you edit it directly in YouTube, you will still retain the views that you got while you were live streaming. And so in a lot of cases, I recommend just edit in YouTube versus downloading and re-uploading. Side note before we go into the back end of my YouTube channel, this for you section is actually custom to every viewer who comes to your channel. If you don't have this toggled on, make sure you do that. Um, and I'll show you how to locate that. We're gonna go to the top right hand corner and click on the profile picture, then click on YouTube Studio. Within your dashboard, you'll click on customization, then layout, and under recommendations for your viewers, you're going to toggle it on and then click on more settings. This is super important. Click on more settings because there are three different content types. And I would suggest if you are a live stream only channel, that's what you're doing, you're going live on a certain day and you're not doing any recorded content, toggle on live streams. It will customize a playlist of 20 live streams that makes sense for your audience. If you are a shorts only YouTube channel, toggle on shorts so that it creates a curated list of that. If you're doing multiple of these types of videos, you can select multiple. In my case, I'm gonna select video. Then down here, you definitely want to change your recency. The default is gonna be all content, you don't want that because some of your old videos are not very good. All of us have been there. You want the recent stuff within the last 12 months. So make sure you click there and then click on done. All right, so we're gonna go to content and then we're going to click on the live tab. 
So you can see here, we have that scheduled webinar already up here and you can see type is streaming software. So that is coming through from StreamYard. Here we have streaming software again, but it is public, not unlisted. So it is showing up on my main page. So I want to pull up a previous live stream where I had the countdown. So let me see. We'll pull this one up. All right, and so just out of curiosity, I'm going to click on, okay, we can close out TubeBuddy. We thank you for your service. By the way, TubeBuddy is like Yoast for YouTube, and it is the tool that I use on my YouTube channel. It has revolutionized things. It has features like the title generator, ad chapters, thumbnail analyzer. It'll suggest tags for you, like it's incredible. So side note, LaShondaBrown.com slash TubeBuddy, you can try that too. And actually you can use it for free. All right, so we're gonna go to editor and that is going to show us this video. Okay, this is a great example. So last year I would do these live streams called work with me sessions where I would talk about something educational at the beginning and then I would transition to a Pomodoro session to help people plan their week. You can see here, that meant that 25 minutes of this video was me screen sharing another video with a countdown which is great for somebody live, but for somebody on the replay, they could care less, right? So we need to make some changes. And you can also see at the beginning, like I said, I start, I hit the go live button after the video has started playing in my StreamYard dashboard. And so it didn't play the full 60 seconds on the video, but there's still 30 seconds of dead time before I show up. Now, what is super important to remember is you will not have the ability to edit this video immediately after you live stream. The reason why is the YouTube server is processing this live stream. So for a little while, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. So I would give it a day or two and then circle back and you'll have the trim and cut feature. Okay, so we're gonna go to trim and cut. And so you can see the ends of the video with these blue tabs here. Now, if you wanna do something really fine, you can zoom in to get really specific, and then you can drag it at the bottom. But in this case, I just need it big enough for me to see essentially the thumbnails. And I can see in the sound wave that at least around this mark is when it's probably dropping off. So what I'm gonna do is just drag it, and it's obviously a countdown timer, so I can kind of tell if I got it all. Let's see here, if I play it from here, and again, it's gonna take a minute to catch up. Okay, so that's starting from the very beginning. I'm gonna go back just to check. That looks pretty good. All right, so we're gonna keep that and then we're gonna drag it to the end. And what I do typically is I have a pretty clear transition between talking and here we go and the work with me session so let's see here give it a second to catch up all right perfect so 1954 25 all right I'm gonna drag it from this spot here and again it's a timer so I can kind of tell from the thumbnail how much I got, and so I'm just gonna, remember it was around 19, so I'm just gonna drag it, and just hold it down and watch it count down. Okay, cool. And the other thing is, again, you'll see the sound wave drop off. So that's a really good indication that I'm done. Okay, cool. So once you have your cuts, what you need to do is hit preview. And what it'll do is show you what it'll look like. You don't have to play the full thing, but for some reason, it really likes for you to hit preview first. And then you're gonna click on save. Now, this is what it's gonna tell you. It may take a few hours for your changes to apply. During that time, viewers will see the current version. You won't be able to make other changes to the video. The original version of your video will be stored so you can undo the edits. While you wait, you can leave the site. So just go ahead and click on save. 
and it's gonna say the video is being processed, please check back later. So you don't need to mess with this at this point. You can just let it simmer. The server is going to do the updates. And so what will happen when it is done, you can see right now this video says it's 4622 in terms of the time. You'll know it's done because it'll be like around 20 minutes at that point because I cut out content from the beginning and I cut out content from the end. So I hope you found that useful if you are utilizing StreamYard to create content on your YouTube channel and you're utilizing those timers from my shop or your own timers and you wanna trim those out for people watching the replay and you still want to retain those views. Now, if you are utilizing StreamYard to live stream with a guest, especially if you're doing this on an ongoing basis, it's going to get really chaotic really quick if you don't have a system. So in the next video, I'm going to walk you through my system for onboarding live stream guests. And you can click on the thumbnail over here to give it a watch. Make sure you like this video if you found it interesting and comment below if you have any other questions about StreamYard. Until next time, ta-ta for now.